Being in bad form in Warzone is the worst. You get excited to play when you hop on, and it's just not happening. You struggle to get to the end game, and sometimes even to pick up a few kills before dying. Never mind actually winning the game. You might be thinking, what are you doing wrong? You're not doing much differently to what you normally do. Well that might be the case. It's just sometimes bad luck can stack on top of each other. This video though will help you minimise the chances of having such a dreadful game or series of games next time you're on. The trick really is to reduce the risks when playing. This could mean fewer high kill games in theory, but by being alive longer and getting to more end games, you're just going to pick up more kills like that anyway. Ok so what can we do to get back on track? First of all, drop somewhere that you know inside out, whether that's on your own or with the squad. If you are with the squad, make sure you are all dropping together so you can try and outnumber any enemies on the ground. I know this seems very obvious, but it can be tempting if it looks kinda quiet to just wander off on your own and start looting. Another tip regarding your landing is to not always target contracts. These are going to be heavily contested areas, especially scavenger contracts. This can be a surefire way to get yourself an early gulag sometimes. Sometimes it's actually better just to leave contracts alone and target just loot boxes to get early weapons and cash as quickly as you can. Actually if you are going to go for a contract, paradoxically I'd actually suggest sometimes going for a most wanted contract. Which sounds weird, but I'll link a video here that I made before on this very issue which outlines why it can be such a great way to get ahead. When you do get enough money together at the start to buy a loadout, my suggestion would be to call it in on top of a building, that's if you're actually near one, to minimise the death potential whilst bringing it in. Seeing that red smoke attracts the wolves of the map, so be quick whatever you're doing. Also just a note, when you are going to get the first map loadout drop, so that's not the one you call in but the one the map drops, try and go for it with a UAV active. It's possible a team is camping on the loadouts ready for some easy kills, and they may not have ghost on or even have their loadout yet, so expose them and give yourself the best chance of picking it up alive. And in terms of picking up the second loadout drop, I would just try and avoid this altogether if you can, unless you really need it. By circle 5 things are usually getting a little bit hectic and ambling towards a loadout drop is usually a surefire way to erase all of the good work you've done up to this point. Of course if you're straight from the gulag, it's usually worth a go at trying to get it since you have nothing to lose. Oh also, just a small tip which could end up saving your life, put your favourite loadout and most used loadout as class 1. This way you can choose the class instantly when at the loadout. This has saved me so many times when there's been teams around me. This is less important for PC players, but I'd recommend for those guys to still have their go to OP class in the same place every time just for speed of choosing that class when you're at the loadout. For us console players we really do just have to just scroll through the list of classes so having it right at the top there can save quite a bit of time. Now, when you do get an early loadout, I know it's tempting to go with overkill and get hunting for kills, but if you are in a bit of bad form, I honestly advise just getting a ghost class on early. You can run into other teams with UAVs and their loadouts, or just people who have found a heartbeat sensor or a UAV out of a loot box. Just minimise that chance of death a little bit more and give yourself a break ok? In terms of the weapon to choose at this point, just choose a good all rounder weapon, something that can kill people at any range. Often we're talking something meta, which is currently I'd say the kilo, alternatively you can click the top right corner of the video here and check out some other good suggestions for all rounder weapons. Don't worry too much about a sniper or SMG as your secondary at this point, chances are you'll kill someone with their loadout and you can just take theirs. Or even just go to the first map loadout and collect another ghost class that has something you want to use as a secondary on it. So you've got your loadout, you're ready to go to the end game, so now what? I would advise to stop over chasing kills and over challenging when in gunfights. That's not to say be totally passive and just try and avoid other people. What I'm talking about is to don't be calling in UAVs and sprinting open around the map for 10 minutes. You can still pick up a whole bunch of kills by setting up well in hotspot areas of the map and of course getting to the end game. 
By being set up in areas, you often will be getting the first shot on people and actually have the advantage of cover. And when I say stop over challenging in gunfights, what I mean is that sometimes I see my team taking on shots to try and finish kills, even when they're really weak and one shot from death. Sometimes you just need to let it go and have some self-preservation, dip out, armour up, and orchestrate another move on them. Sometimes it is okay to overchallenge when you and your squad are outnumbering another squad, but you need to communicate that well and not just get picked off. When to actually engage the enemy is important too, which I did mention in another video of mine on how to stop dying so often in Warzone, which you can find by clicking in the top right hand corner now. I will summarise that video as best as I can. The things you have to quickly ask yourself are, do you know how many of the enemy there are? Is the storm going to influence the gunfight? Are the enemy in cover? Are you in cover? Can you find cover? Are there other teams nearby that could third party your gunfight? Basically, don't just shoot automatically when you see someone unless you literally have to. Take a few seconds and try to weigh up your chances of coming out on top. I probably see this most when there's a teammate of mine who's the last one left in say trios or quads and he'll just shoot someone in the back. He goes like, oh great, I've got a kill, I'll finish this guy right now. And obviously in trios and quads, the chances are he's got a team around somewhere. So inevitably, you know, he, he just dies. And I see that time and time again. Even I sometimes do it when, you know, I'm overhyped, I've got a few kills, I fancy taking on the whole map. But honestly, it's time to choose your shots. My next piece of advice is to move to the next circle early and figure out the safest route. Basically what I'm saying is don't leave it late and be running with the storm on your back across dangerous areas. Again, it seems very obvious, but let me give you an example. I drop in downtown basically 80% of the time and often we have to move across the ravines either side, whether that's to the hospital or across to the port. If we don't move early, we're going to be running across vast open spaces with no cover, with the storm on our back. This will give some people the easiest kills of their damn life. If we see the storm is going to kick us out of town, we move early. On the note of storm circles, you can actually use them to infer where enemies will be coming from, especially if the closing circle is narrowing the map down massively. For example, the circle is forcing people to the corner of the map, and you can spot that early enough. You can then identify a good building to set up in, ideally centrally in that circle, nice and early. Then when people are forced out of densely populated areas, you know the direction they'll be coming from, and unfortunately for them, you hold the often limited cover in that area. Again, if I take that back to my games when I'm coming out of downtown, say if I get pushed across to hospital, if I make that move early enough, I can just set up near hospital and take out the people moving across downtown late. Okay, now here's a big tip which is actually useful for whatever game you're playing, actually just whatever you're doing, and that's take a break. You might be tempted to just keep jumping back in and trying again straight away, but you can get fatigued and let your concentration drop. So just walk away for a few minutes, stand up, walk around a little bit, maybe make a nice cup of tea, try not to look at your phone, this just adds to the fatigue too, especially with your eyes. Then just come back refreshed and give it your best shot again. Okay, that's today's kind of uh, wholesome message done, kind of a family friendly guy. Wow, what a nice guy he is, that is good advice. Okay, so although I've given out some specific tips here, my general advice to improve in your very next game and to stop the rot in terms of your bad form is to figure out why you keep dying and try and correct that in the next game. This sounds super simple, but most people just blank it out and click next game. You want to learn from your mistakes, just like in life. Look at that, just some more wholesome content. I can't stop. Oh, you die because you're outnumbered? We'll get your squad to group tighter. You died in the storm? Well, move to the next circle earlier. You miss your shots? Well, make sure you've got a weapon on that suits you. And of course, practice, practice, and practice to improve your shot. Always remember the probably misquoted line from Einstein on insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And with that comes the end of today's video. I hope you've taken something from it, if you have please give the video a quick like, and for more Call of Duty videos you could always subscribe. Bye for now.